And we've just started a new series called The Parables of Jesus. And I have asked, as, we, as we're launching into this new series, I've asked our Bible scholar in residence, Dr. Carl Tony. This has been Tony Day up here, okay? Pastor Lisa was just up here with Purple Hearts, and uh, she's married to Dr. Carl. And, um, and I've asked him if he would just give us an introduction to the overall subject of the parables, what to look for as we study the parables in this series. Would you please give a warm Purpose Church welcome to Dr. Carl as he comes uh, to share with us. I guess if we had a uh, third Tony up here, we'd have a bad 80s Oh, band. man, that would be great. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. Uh, so... <laughs> um, Well, thanks so much, Glenn. It's great to be here. You know, as I was uh, coming to church, getting ready for this talk, I told the kids, look, we can't have the radio on. Uh, Don't talk to me. I've got to practice my talk. And so I started to practice what I'm about to say to you. And then when I got done, I realized, you know, I'm talking about parables, but do my kids know what parables are? As I've been going on and on in this car ride on the way there. And so I I turned to them and said, "Well, well, what's a parable? And Pax, my seven-year-old, said, well, Dad, that's easy. Parables are just stories that are told to teach you something. It's like, wow, that's it. Parables are just stories to teach you something. I said, well, where did you learn that, Pax? He said, from Sunday school here at church. Like, I just love our children's ministry. I love everything that they're doing. I love the things that, that our children are getting taught at the church. It's truly really incredible. And that's it, something as simple as what Pax already captured for a parable. But I want to talk to you a little bit more than just, they're not just stories to teach you something, but there's a few things that we can look at parables to help us have a little deeper understanding of what they're about. The first thing is with parables is that they often have a twist in them. Do you like stories that have twists? I know I like stories with twists. One of the most, uh, one of my favorite movies was The Sixth Sense, right? It's such a great movie where this kid who sees dead people and this guy that's been helping him to figure it out and process seeing dead people is a dead person. What? End of the movie. Sorry if I ruined that old movie for you. There again, Glenn ruins movies all the time. But that twist for us, that's what makes that story so brilliant. And what's great about the parables of Jesus is they often have a twist, a surprise in them that the hearers would not expect. And if you're feeling like parables are a bit stale for you, a little bit ordinary, it's like, ah, I've heard this one again, I want to encourage you to be surprised by Jesus and the parables because when he said them for the first time, people were shocked by what he had to say. And what's great about the parable that we're going to hear today is Glenn's going to talk to you about the shocking part of this this parable. We still get shocked by it today, but you can look for those shockers in these parables, and I, I promise you that you will love to learn to wrestle with the parables when you start to hear how they shock you. The second thing about parables is that Jesus uses tangible things to talk about transcendent truth. Jesus uses the ordinary to talk about the extraordinary. He, uses, he talks about what it means to be a farmer, what it means to live in a city. He's talking about the experiences of a first century Jew. He's very relatable to the people in the first century because he's using and talking their language. But here's the challenge for you and I is none of us are first century Jews. We have to become time travelers. We have to be like my favorite TV show, Doctor Who, and enter into the TARDIS and go back in time and discover what it means to be a first century Jew. And when we do that, we discover that things are a little bit different. Our values are a little different. So even something as simple as the parable and the sower and the seeds. You and I, we hear that story. It's like, yeah, yeah, a guy threw around some seed. Not a big deal. Just go down to Lowe's or Home Depot and pick up a few extra seed packets. So what if he threw some stuff on the side? For a first century person, they would have been shocked by this farmer because a first century person only had a precious amount of seed that they had collected from the previous year's harvest. Their family's survival depended on making sure that every single seed that was sown in the ground came back with a harvest because if it didn't, it could mean that someone in their family was dead. And so they're shocked that Jesus would compare God to that kind of sower, that sort of lavishness, that... that, Why would you do that with something so precious? And so we need to look for the ways that they shock us, but also how we need to go back in time like a first century person. And that's what's great about this series because that's what Glenn and the rest of the team are doing for us. Uh, The third thing about parables is that we often use the Bible and even parables, we treat it like it's a mirror. As if when we look at scripture that it's giving insights to my life, to my family's life, to my community, we make the Bible about me. How do I become a better person? How do I become a better father? How do I become a better employee? Now, there's, there's good things about that, but that's not what the parables are about. It's not what the Bible is about. 
The Bible is not a mirror offering you a reflection of your life. The Bible is more like a set of glasses offering clarity and insight into how the world works and more importantly, who God is. And the fact is, is that in this world, we think that there's a lot of people in charge, don't we? Like in my family at home, sometimes I think I'm in charge. Sometimes Lisa thinks we're in charge. Uh, sometimes she thinks she's in charge. Like, who knows who's going to be in charge? Or you go to your work and you think, who's in charge? My boss. Or we think about who's in charge of our city or our government. We often think about power structures and people being in charge. But what the Bible tells us, what Jesus tells us, is that we're really not in charge of our life. And other people aren't in charge of our life. God's in charge. And the parables remind us of what it looks like for the world that God is in charge and how our values and lives changed when we put God in charge of our lives. And they encourage us to remember that God's in charge. Whoa, Dr. Carl, thank you, sir.